May the meditation of my heart and words be acceptable to you. In your name we pray. I'd like to first say good morning to all who are out there um, joining us live on YouTube and uh, streaming here with us in Zoom. A special shout out. I won't be able to connect with all of you because there's, there's almost 100 of you out there. Um, but I would like to uh, shout out to just a few people that I see that are here today. Uh, for Charles Glass and the, and the Ingrams and for Donna and for Emily and Gail and Gretchen and Haley and Janice and Jessica and Joan and Julie and Mary and Michael, good morning to Pat and to Sherry, all the Sherrys, all the Richards, all the Marys out there. It's really, it's really wonderful to hear and see you out there. Um, I hear you through your emails and you're connecting with me after the service. I so appreciate it. And in the comments that you write during our intercession prayers and um, later in the service. So um, I just want to say good morning and happy Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Come on now, somebody out there in the panelists has to respond to that. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Okay. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about this first Easter, that, that, that morning um, when, when they went and discovered that Jesus was missing. Now, Mary was the first to see the empty tomb and to proclaim to the other disciples. And she, she went to them and with, with this understanding that they had stolen Jesus's body. And the disciples went because they thought Mary must have had not slept enough or whatever that is. As a matter of fact, Luke describes it as, oh, the women are just telling idle tales. It's malarkey. They're making this up, but it wasn't until they went and saw with their own eyes, did they realize something was different about this Easter, about that day. And they returned, they returned to their homes, the disciples did in fear, and they locked the doors because they weren't sure what was to happen next. As a matter of fact, the Gospel of Mark just has the ending of the Gospel as they just run away in fear. As a matter of fact, it was so disturbing to the writers of the other Gospel, they added another ending. I, when I was thinking about that very first Easter, I realized that there was just, it has a lot of parallels to this Easter for me. A lot of parallels. We have fear and panic and this rush to share news and the misinformation they have stolen Jesus's body. And it just doesn't seem like an Easter that we're used to. Something has shifted, something has changed. So, you know, I was reading somewhere, we, I, I have lots of blogs and groups of different clergy from all over the country, people who I've been to seminary with, people who I met at conferences and that sort of thing. And the first reaction to this shutdown of our churches in the sense of having to do uh, worship in our homes instead of in our buildings was to maybe perhaps think about moving the date of Easter. I mean, could it really be Easter, us separated in our homes? I mean, what's gonna happen? We don't have trumpets in live. We don't, we don't get to wear our Easter hats. I mean, I don't get to like, I mean, I certainly didn't get an Easter haircut, that's for sure. I mean, can it really be Easter despite everything that's going on being in our homes? And so the thought was, is that the calendar is pretty arbitrary. Why don't we just move Easter until we're able to get together? We can just lean into Lent. But the, you know, at first when I thought about it, I thought, you know, why not? I mean, the calendar is arbitrary. It doesn't feel like we can celebrate Easter in our homes all by ourselves. What, I mean, there's not even a, a luncheon to go to afterwards with the Mortons, right? But, you know, the more I thought about it, the more I thought that's silly in some ways because Easter comes no matter what happens. That's the beauty of Easter. Resurrection happens no matter what's going on in our lives. 
that first Easter explains that perfectly, right? In the midst of despair and darkness, Jesus's light and resurrection happens. They didn't wait until Mary got her perfect dress. They didn't wait until the disciples completely understood Mary. They didn't wait to get trumpets. Easter happened. Easter always happens. Jesus lives. That phrase, Jesus lives, isn't just about a time long ago where Jesus overcame death. It isn't about a future ethereal experience of Jesus. It's about the here and now, that Jesus lives today, now, even the middle of COVID-19. In our darkest moments, Jesus offers true resurrection and light. Mark Andrew Poe wrote, he wrote something, hold on. In one of his children books, he wrote, even without church walls or doors or sconces, Easter has come. Even without altars or crosses, Easter has come. Easter comes. I was reminded this year of um, a little uh, a parishioner um, that I actually didn't have, have an opportunity to meet at my old parish. And um, she was an amazing woman and her stories lived beyond her. And I kind of, uh, the way they talk about her just reminds me of this, this woman that I knew. And so she kind of lives in my heart in a way that um, I didn't get to experience her on this world. Um, she was Southern and she has this phrase called Alleluia Anyway. And so anytime there was any sort of complete and total disaster, she would look at the disaster and say, well, alleluia anyway. And that was her thing to say alleluia anyway, even in the darkest of moments. It was such her thing that this is the part, this is how I know her, is, is that during her funeral, she wrote it in her instructions to produce a banner that said, Alleluia anyway, and to post that banner at her funeral so that they can all look and say, Alleluia anyway, no matter what happens. So this year, we may not have trumpets live and we may not have Easter hats or outfits to share, and we may not even get a haircut to celebrate Easter, but Easter is here. Easter is here despite everything, because alleluia anyway. We're in this opportunity in a way. You see, usually with Easter, we go, we dress our best, we go to church, and then we go to, then we go to the luncheon and we celebrate Easter in our homes, and we go back to our lives as if back to normal, right? Celebrating Easter in our lives. But this, we're in this time where we can't actually go back to normal, can we? We're kind of in this middle world, right? This space, this liminal space where we in our homes can embrace this time and ground ourselves in this understanding that Jesus lives not in that ethereal way, but in that real way. Not sometime in the past or sometime in the future, but right here, right now, in our very homes and in our very lives. We can work on learning how to Easter within us, to ground ourselves into that dream of God that all of God's people will live in justice and mercy and to live out that Eastering in our lives. Alleluia comes and Easter comes no matter what happens. We are called as an Easter people to live it out in our lives, no matter how dark, no matter how scary, no matter anything. Go out and Easter into your own lives. Alleluia, anyway. Alleluia, anyway. Amen.